think that my earliest memories of the BSO would have to be um, as a high school student. I grew up in this area in the suburbs of Boston and I played in the youth orchestra over at the New England Conservatory and it was a natural step for me to just walk across the street and, and see a BSO concert. So when I was there on the weekends, uh, that was something I did more often than not, I would think. I did my undergrad in New York at Juilliard and then I came back up to Boston to do my master's studying with Tim Jenis before I uh, won a job in the Detroit Symphony where I stayed for three seasons before I was lucky enough to be able to come back to Boston. When I finished my master's at BU, I was offered a position on the faculty there. Tim needed some help running the chamber music program and just managing some of the day-to-day -day operations of the department. And so it was a, a really fantastic opportunity for me to have a space to practice and to be able to do some playing with ensembles in Boston. I did a lot of playing with new music ensembles, occasionally playing extra with the Boston Symphony. And it was a great launching pad for me to be able to practice and take auditions while still gaining some, some valuable experience. Vic Firth, I think, is still a huge presence in the Boston Symphony. His sound was just something that, uh, that we all remember. And I think we all are able to draw off of. When I grew up in this area, I was able to hear Vic play a lot with the orchestra. And I don't want to speak for Tim, but I think he benefited also from having some time in the orchestra as Vic's colleague. And I think a lot of the qualities of Vic's playing that musicians talk about and think about are also there in Tim's playing. He's a very natural timpanist, and I think it was a natural um, step for him to move over to the principal timpani position. It's great to be a part of this BSO percussion section. And I was lucky enough to be around for my first couple of years. And as a student at Tanglewood also, to be exposed to the older generation of players and see how they approach sounds, see what their approach was to the instruments in the orchestra, the relationship of the percussion section in the orchestra, and to sort of use that as a model when I first got here to try to match what they were doing and add some of my own personality, who I am as a player, and sort of bring a unique perspective to the, to the orchestra. Tanglewood is an amazing and unique environment, uh, particularly for students. I was a Tanglewood Fellow in 2001 and 2002, and those summers were just so pivotal for me in my development as a musician. To be able to sort of be exposed to everything that the BSO is doing throughout the summer, and to have so much repertoire so much music that's, that's thrown at the students is just such a great thing. And it's one of the traditions that the Boston Symphony is able to continue that I think is just incredibly important. I really enjoy participating in, in chamber music activities whenever I can. And Boston has a, a large collection of contemporary music ensembles and also active composers that are uh, writing pieces and having them performed. And it's, it's a really unique and remarkable experience to be able to work with a living composer and interact with that person and find out what was their intention, why did they write this particular passage, and be able to sort of have a growth in an organic way of a preparation of a piece. There are so many talented musicians in Boston, and I've been fortunate to develop relationships with some musicians outside the orchestra who are involved in other musical activities. And I think that's something I'd like to do more going forward to be able to sort of forge more connections and, and be more involved in the community wherever I can. There is a perception or stereotype out there that orchestras nowadays are becoming more and more homogenized. And I think to some extent this is true because there's just much more music accessible to us out there. It's easy to get a recording of an orchestra in LA or Berlin or Vienna. 
And so players are able to, to really get that in their ear and be less focused on just the one tradition that's happening in that specific city. I think there are many things that make the Boston Symphony special. On the one hand, it's one of the world's greatest orchestras, and the talents of the players manifest themselves on stage every week in performances. Every sound that we produce on stage has some type of preconceived intention by the player, but it's, a, it's an ensemble that's so flexible that we take pieces from what we hear coming across the stage, how a different section is inflecting a particular musical passage, and there's a lot of adjusting and being flexible, being open to that, so that even though we have something very specific in mind that we're trying to produce, we're still communicating very actively and hopefully creating a very spontaneous performance in the process of doing that. One of the things that makes that possible is, is to be able to play in Symphony Hall. It's such a phenomenal acoustic, both for us to be able to communicate as musicians, but also to be able to make choices as well in what we do with a particular passage. In some other concert halls, players have to make sound decisions based on just what will project in the hall, what will balance with other instrument groups. And we're so fortunate to be able to have a complete other dimension on top of that as far as our color palette and our articulation that we're, we're able to choose from that we, we end up being able to make choices. For example, I'll choose a mallet based on what's going to blend with the woodwind section or what's going to support the strings in, in that particular moment. And I can really just use the hall's acoustic, take advantage of it, and know that when it gets out there, it's going to be clear and it's going to blend with the other instrument groups. I enjoy the variety that just being a percussionist provides. We have uh, many different instruments that we are required to, to play and be proficient on. And so on the one hand, it takes a lot of work and a lot of sort of personal maintenance to be able to put in the time in all of these areas. But also I have the, the unique role of being the assistant timpanist. So oftentimes during the first half of the program, I'll play timpani on the concerto on an overture. And then in the second half, I'll join the percussion section. We're required to play all sorts of instruments, particularly in contemporary and modern music. Composers nowadays are writing for instruments such as the snare drum and the bass drum that are sort of traditional instruments in the percussion section, but also more exotic instruments from other countries and other cultures like the log drum, which is a hollowed out tree trunk, and a flexitone, which is a thin piece of metal with some beaters attached that bends in pitch as the player shakes it. And so it's, it's always interesting to experience more and more of that. Most of my interests outside of the orchestra are also musical interests. When I'm not performing, I like to try to catch some other concerts happening in Boston or Cambridge. I like to try to see a lot of jazz and a lot of bluegrass when I can. One of my other interests, though, is, is cooking, and I really enjoy being able to sort of dedicate some time and make a complex recipe and spend some time in the kitchen and, and learn more and more about different culinary traditions. I think classical music is important, like all art forms are important these days. It's something that makes people think. It's something that makes people ask questions when they are able to experience a performance. And this is something that's unfortunately missing more and more in our society and our day-to-day -day lives. So even someone who doesn't have a deep background or a lot of experience in classical music, I would encourage them to, to just see a concert, see what they think. And I think that familiarity just breeds a, a love and a real connection with what we're doing.